Alléluia. Praise the Lord. We thank God for today. Glory be to His name. Today is a Monday, 29th of August, 29th of August, 2022. Hallelujah. So the topic of our open own daily devotional is sealed. Sealed. Edd. Edd. Sealed. The, in language Yoruba dialect, we call it a DD, the seal. Hallelujah. So the memory verse that was read to us from the open heaven that our Father Lord Pastor Deboye wrote. The memory verse is Ephesians chapter one verse thirteen. Ephesians chapter one verse thirteen. It says. In whom ye are trusted, after that ye add the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. With that Holy Spirit of promise. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. And uh, the Bible passage was taken from Act of Apostles chapter 19, verse 1 to 6. Act of Apostles 19, 1 to 6. Praise God. Amen. So our uh, Father and the Lord, Pastor, the way is making us to know here that in the spirit realm, there is, a, there is a place we call spirit realm. And there's another space we call, there's another place we call physical realm. This is the physical realm. We are now. It's the physical realm we are now. Where we build a house, we get married, we bear children, we go to school, we go to our secular work as an engineer, as a doctor, as a teacher, as a pastor, and as a prophet, whatever. Minister of God, and whatever. So that's the physical realm. But in the spiritual realm, there's another place called spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm, what takes place in the spiritual realm? There are spiritual activities. They are not physical. They are not physical activities that I mentioned, like going to school, going to work, and whatever. But in the spiritual realm, the spiritual activity that takes place there, number one, praise, praises to God. Number two, fight and battle. I'm going to mention them then. I'm going to mention in the spiritual realm. So, Papa, the boy is now making us to know that in the spiritual realm, everyone has a mark. In the spiritual realm, everybody has a mark. Because we have only two type of team in the spiritual realm. Only two. There's no kokometa. In the physical realm, we have many teams. Abi, you can belong to Chelsea if it is a football. Some can belong to uh, Man City. Some can belong to Man U, Manchester. Man City, no, what? We have Manchester City, Man City. We have uh, Manchester United. Then we have us in the football. Then the, apart from footballing, you can be a doctor. That's a, that's a category of people. You can be a liar, that's a thing. You can be a pastor, and you can be a you know doctor, and so many things. So we have different um, team, different categories, different groups in the physical realm. 
But in the spiritual realm, we have only two group, two team. The team of the Lord and the team of Satan. Kokwemeji. Party Kokwemeji. Unlike here, we have APC, we have PDP, we have uh, NPP, we have SDP, we have a number of parties in Nigeria. They are more than undrained in Nigeria alone. Parties. Talk of Ghana, talk of uh, uh, America, and many talk of all other countries of the world. Different political parties, different type of religion. That's the physical realm. Physical realm, like Yeti Bao, Alat Machera, Daudishi, all those rubbish and nonsense. Freedom of everything is in the physical realm. In the spiritual realm, there's no freedom of everything like that. You are restricted to two groups, two parties, two teams. And who are, what are the teams? The team of the Lord Jesus, the God Almighty, the light. Then the team of darkness, the devil, Satan, Lucifer. So that's the two teams that we have. And Baba, everybody is making us to know that in this team of the spiritual realm, they have their own mark. Everybody has their own mark. The mark of the Lord Jesus is on everyone that gave their life to Jesus Christ. If you give your life to Jesus Christ today, or you have given your life to Jesus Christ before, then the mark of Jesus will come upon you. Pyam. Then, those that have not given their life to Jesus as are unbeliever, automatically, there's no, there's no gain saying, there's no sitting on the fence. The moment you have not given your life to Jesus and the mark of Jesus is not on you, automatically the mark of Satan will be upon that person. Mark of Satan will be upon that person. Don't forget that we are saying that after the rapture, eh, there will be Antichrist. And what will happen? Marking. There will be marking. They will say people that want Antichrist should, sorry, should take a mark of what? 66. They must take the mark of the Antichrist. Well, that's the mark of Satan. 666. So, so that you will know the marking. And those that says no, they don't want to take mark or that they belong to Jesus, they still believe in Jesus. Despite the fact that they made a mistake, they couldn't rapture with Christ, but they still want to belong to Jesus at the end. So those people will not take the mark of Satan. But as men that have taken the mark of Satan, the six CCs, the Antichrist mark, they are destined to hell. No, nothing can change it again. Permanently, nothing can change it. So that is what is happening in heaven right now. In the spiritual realm right now, already now, there is marking in the spiritual realm. If you give your life to Jesus now on heart, your soul will appear before the Almighty God in heaven and they will mark, they will mark it with the blood of Jesus that this one belongs to us. So the marking is already on, on ground. But we would have not given their life to Jesus. They are, their soul are marked already with the mark of Lucifer. I think you know the logo of Lucifer. He has a logo. Lucifer has a logo. So you should be careful of that logo. So don't wear any clothes. Some people will just wear any clothes anyhow with that mark. They have problem. They will have problem. So Lucifer has a logo. They are apart from logo. He has BVN. Lucifer, Lucifer to have BVN. He has a, a NIN. And the NIN and BVN is 66. 
666 is their number. So be, be careful of that. Don't let anybody lure you into that. Be careful of that. So, but they have not revealed it now. But the word of God has revealed it unto us already from the Bible. People that are not born again, people that are not Christians, they will not know the secret. But we that are children of God, we have known the secret already. The word of God has revealed it. But they have not revealed it. But when the time comes, after the rapture, they will now reveal the whole truth, their true identity. They will reveal it. That everybody that wants to do it, they must take this mark. But we have known already now, by the Spirit of God and the Word of God, there is that there is marking already in heaven, in the spiritual realm, there is marking. On heart, it's only in, on heart that we don't see it physically. But it will come to reality physically after the rapture. Are you getting my point? But even now that there's no rapture, in the spiritual realm, it's taking place already. You see, there's nothing that will happen in the physical that will not first of all happen in the spiritual. Anything that will happen in the physical must first of all happen in the spiritual, in the spiritual realm. So already marking is taking place now in the spiritual realm. If you give your life to Jesus on heart, in the spiritual realm, they will mark you with the blood of Jesus. And if you don't give your life to Jesus on that, in the spiritual realm, you are having the mark of Satan. There's no gain saying, there's no, nobody can sit on the fence. Like, Me, I don't give my life to Jesus, and I don't belong to the devil. Lie, lie, there's nothing like that. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, you have inherited the sin of Adam and Eve. Except you give your life to Jesus. Then, the blood of Jesus will, is the only power that can wash away your sin and mark you with his blood. Praise God. So, Baba now explained to us that we have three types of marking and seal for the children of God. So we are less concerned about all those um, children of the devil or children of Satan now. We are talking about the children of God. Baba is talking about the children of God. And he said, number one, we have to, you, three, three seal, three seal, three mark you must have to be bona fide children of God, to be a bona fide child of God, to be a bona fide, what did I say? To be a bona fide child of God, you need three mark that make up your seal. Three marks makes up your seal. We have Trinity. The God, the Father, the God, the Son, and the God, the Holy Spirit. Now, the same God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they have their own mark. They have their marks. And those three marks must be upon you. Then that makes up a seal, a complete seal of Trinity on you. The seal of Trinity will now be upon you. And number one, the first one is the mark of the blood of Jesus. What do I call it? The mark of the blood of Jesus. The mark of the blood of Jesus will only come into being when you give your life to Jesus Christ. Most of you learn, the Bible says in the book of Romans that for all have sin and come short the glory of God. So, to see anybody, everybody on earth, have seen and they have come short of the glory of God. But the Bible says the gift of God is through redemption, through the blood of Jesus. So through the blood of Jesus, the Lord redeems us from sin. So anybody that gives his life to Jesus that says, Lord Jesus, I confess my sin unto you. I recognize you as my Lord and Savior. 
as from today I give you my life to you, and I take you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sin. Write my name in the book of life. Wash away my sin. In Jesus' name I pray. If anybody say that prayer with all his heart and make that confession, immediately. And he humble himself immediately. What will happen? The soul of that person will be presented to the blood of Jesus. And immediately, Jesus will pour the blood upon him and wash him clean from all his sin. And write his name in the book of life. That is a mark. The mark of the blood of Jesus will be upon that person. The devil don't touch that person. As of that moment, the devil don't touch that person. Come on, we another jersey. He has taken another jersey. He belongs to another camp. So they will not touch him. They may be tempting him. They may be wooing him to come back. What is happening in, in politics now? As I tell uh, yesterday or there about, I heard that uh, Tinumbu, the APC aspirant in Nigeria, presidential aspirant, Ashwaju Tinumbu, had a meeting with Wiki <laughs> in uh, London or there about, in abroad. They had a meeting. What is this trying to do? And that's what they are doing now. They'll be cross carpeting. He wants Wiki to come to. We can belong to PDP, and he wants we can to come to APC, and that will be the base of the meeting. Because Aja Kini, Ere Kini, Aja Mbekunche, Ose Ere Kakata Aja Mbekunche, do you pay? Over the over the man there, over he wants to divide the. So he wants we can to come. He wants we can to come to APC, and that's the does it. And Wiki said that he's, he's, he's consulting. He's consulting that he has not given his consent. So when you give your life to Jesus and you belong to Jesus Christ, Satan will be tempting you. He will be wooing you. He will want you to come back. But he, cannot, he doesn't have authority to touch you again until if such a person is gullible and went back to Satan. But if you are not gullible, if you stay, the mark of the blood of Jesus that is upon you is enough to protect you. That's number one. Number two mark is the mark of baptism. Water baptism. Jesus Christ told us that go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Say, as many that believe, say, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Baptize them. So if you are if you have given your life to Jesus and you have not done water baptism, it is important. Water baptism too has its own mark and it has its own power. The water baptism, especially water baptism by immersion, he has his own power. He has he has meaning. When you and when the when a pastor or a minister of God holds you, and they say, we baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. You are in the water. The two of you will be inside the water, in the flowing water. And they say, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And it will now take you we, inside the water. Immerse you. Water by immersion. It will immerse you inside the water, put you inside the water, and you raise you back again. Okay. He has a deep meaning, which is not meant for today's teaching anyways. But immersion means you died with Christ and you resurrect again. As you go inside the water, all your sin go into death and you now came back alive as a new person. All sin, every cause, all everything goes away. That's water baptism. He too has his own mark. That's number two. Number three is the mark of the Holy Spirit. 
the mark of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, Jesus Christ promised his disciple. He says, go and wait for me. At where? At where? No. He said, you should go and wait for the day of Pentecost. They wait for me until the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem. Say, I will send the Holy Spirit upon you. And on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost comes, they are in the upper room. They were praying. They were praying. And the Holy Spirit came upon them. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to them. And they were all baptized with fire. So you must be baptized with water. That's the mark of the baptism of water. Then you must be baptized with fire. Even John the Baptist said it. When he was, he was saying, he says, there's a man coming that he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Referring to Jesus Christ. And water baptism is very, very important that even Jesus Christ went for water baptism. Do you know? Even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, when he was on earth, he went to John the Baptist for water baptism and they baptized Jesus Christ. In fact, John didn't, John didn't want to do it because he recognized that this is Jesus Christ. He said, no, I don't want that. He's greater than him. But Jesus Christ said, no, you have to do it. You are in your office. That is your office. I cannot do your work. You do your work. It is in your office. That's another lesson. You don't do another man's work. You don't usurp the office of another person. Jesus humble himself and said, no, it is your work. Do it. And John baptized Jesus Christ. He rose him again. And John said, this man will baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. Me, I can only baptize you with water. And truly, Jesus Christ baptized the disciple with Holy Ghost and power. And up to today, he's still baptizing him. So, making three, three mark. The mark of what? The blood. The mark of water baptism. The mark of Holy Ghost fire baptism. So, those three marks make one seal, a complete seal on you. So, you must pray, pray, pray for it. If you give your life to Jesus, then you pray for the Holy Ghost fire baptism. Then you seek your pastor, seek your pastor that he should give you, that he should come and do water baptism for you. Then they will take you to the river or to end to the water, and they will just do the water baptism for you. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So by so doing. When you have these two, three seals on you, you are a complete and bona fide children of God. And by so doing, the devil will have no option than just to let you go because you have completed the seal. Amen? 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 So the Almighty God will help us. So if you are... If I now conclude that if you have been baptized already, you can ask for fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit in your life. Praise God. Let me tell you the truth. The Holy Spirit made me to know something that if you want to remain steadfast in the Lord, the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost must be on daily basis. Every day when you wake up, you pray and pray that Holy Spirit, I need your fresh anointing. You see, Holy Spirit is a fire. Hmm? Holy Spirit is like fire. It comes in different form. It can come like a wind. In fact, on that day of Pentecost, it came like what? A rushing mighty wind. Then, as a fire. After a rushing mighty wind that all of them, everything was blowing. Woo, woo, woo. 
Then he now come down like a fire again and divided itself upon them all like a tongue of fire. You know, what's okay? You want to only call it. I reckon. So, Holy Spirit is a fire and it's a wind. Now, one, one of the characteristics of a fire is that fire needs fuel to burn. Hmm? Fire always needs a medium to burn. And you always need a fuel. That's one of the characteristics of fire. So, if fire does not have enough fuel, what happens to it? It will be going down. It will be going down. So if you have the fire of the Holy Spirit in you, then you need the fuel to keep it burning. To keep it burning. And the only person that has the fuel is the same Holy Spirit. It's the one that has the fuel. So you have to pray on daily basis that God give me more fuel so that the fire of the Holy Spirit you have given unto me will not die. It will not quench. It will not go down. When the virgin, ten virgins were waiting for the bridegroom, ten were wise, I mean five were wise, five were full. Why, did, why were they full? Because they don't have extra oil. They don't have extra oil. And normally the 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 the, 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 the what's it called the lamp they are holding, the fire will go down at a point when the oil is going down, the fire will be going down. So no matter whom you are, if you receive the Holy Spirit today, by tomorrow you have used an amount of it, so it will be going down. You need to go back to the filling station and put more fuel inside it, so that it will come up again and keep on going. And what is the, what is your filling station? The Holy Spirit is your filling station. When you pray, prayer, when you pray every day, prayer room is your filling station. Prayer is your filling station. And when you pray every day, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, fill me afresh, fill me afresh, give me more fuel. Give me more fire. And you will discover that it will give you more fuel. It will give you more fire for the day. It will give you more fire. It will give you more fuel for the day. That will keep you going. So tomorrow again, you pray. Next tomorrow, you pray. That's how it is. That's the only method. The gospel of you save once and you save for, for all. Nalayo. All the gospel of once you save, you are saved forever. Nalayo is the gospel of the devil. Don't believe it. Once you save today, thank God. Tomorrow, pray again that God give me more power. Don't let me fall. Give me more fuel and he will give you more fuel. So that you will not fall back. Because the devil will be tempting you. Devil don't relax. What the Bible says, he came and tempted Jesus Christ three times. And the Bible says he left him for a while. Even if, if devil can be bold, if Satan can be bold to go and tempt the Lord Jesus, and he know fully well that he, Jesus is the Son of God. You want to tell me that Satan, Satan did not know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? He knew. But yet, he was very bold because that is his own work. That is work. Legitimate work. To look for downfall of children of God. So if we can be bold, and God permitted him, of course, because God knows that God is a righteous judge. It is you that you will resist him. God will not resist Satan for you. It is you. The Bible says, receive the devil and he will flee from you. The Bible did not say, call upon me and I will receive Satan for you. Did, did the Bible say that? It said, receive the devil. You are to receive the devil in the name of Jesus. Receive the devil in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of God, and he will flee. That's what the Bible says. 
So God will permit Satan to tempt somebody. There's no problem. Ah, he did it for uh, Job now. When Satan said it's also, uh, something about Job, God, God permitted him. God permitted him to tempt Job, but he told him that don't touch his life. God permitted him to tempt Job, but he said, don't touch his life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So, even if Satan wanted to come and tempt you, he will take permission from God. And God will say you should go. There's no child of God that Satan will go and tempt that will not take permission from God. Satan is always at the presence of God to take permission. He will always take permission from God to go and tempt. Any of you. And God will always grant him permission. Go and tempt him so that we know. that you, So that you will be sure that he's my son. Because God wants to be proud of you. He wants to be proud of you. And if you don't do examination, how will you pass? How will you get promotion? So temptation is an examination for you. So God will always permit Satan to go and tempt you. God don't tempt anyway. But he will permit the, 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 the accuser of brethren, Satan, to go and tempt. Tempt him. Let's see. And prove to yourself that this one is a true bona fide child of man. And Satan will too will go. So it is now left for you to pray for the fire of the Holy Spirit, the power of God to resist the devil. You are going to pray for the power and the fire to resist the devil. And you now resist the devil in the name of God. It's not that you will say that God will come and help you to resist the devil. God will not answer you. God will not answer you. It is you that will pray. Holy Ghost, help me, help me, help me. Give me power. And when you have the power, you now say, Satan, I resist you in the name of Jesus. And he will flee. The Bible says, and he will flee away from you. He will flee. Oh, my sir. So, what is it? Oh, sir. So, that's the essence of the power of God. The mark 